Today we're going to talk about how we solve multi-step equations. In our last section we talked about just solving simple equations where we basically used our inverse operations to isolate the variable to solve the equation. Now we're going to look at trying to solve a little more complicated equations and we'll start with some easier ones and eventually throughout this year we're going to get a lot more complicated. Multi-step equations, just the way they sound, require multiple steps. It's not just a one move and you're done. So if you have more than one operation in an equation, how do you know which one to undo first? Remember we talked in the last section about the word undo basically refers to our inverse operations and we have to undo the operations that we see to move numbers or variables eventually to the other side to start isolating the variable. How do we know which one to do? So basically this is how this works. So when solving for a variable, we use order of operations which we all refer to as PEMDAS parentheses, exponents, multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting. However, we use them in reverse order. So I refer to this as sad map. You'll hear me use that word a million times this year. Basically, trying to help us remember PEMDAS sticks, SADMEP is the reverse. So basically, when we look at trying to solve multi-step equations and how do we decide which one to undo first, we basically think of our operations, but we think about our order of operations in reverse order. So we think SADMEP. So that would mean subtraction and addition would actually come before multiplying and dividing which will then come before the exponents, which also comes before parentheses. So SADMIP is a very important part to make sure that we follow when we have more than one step that we are trying to undo. So in this first example, we have the height of a tree after x years, and we're given the equation. We want to know how many years is the tree 24 feet tall. Well, maybe the first thing we want to kind of do here is look at maybe defining what this height is. So let's just give it a variable h. So really what we're looking for is now an equation. They first gave us an expression, just the 1.5x plus 15, but now I'm going to make it an equation. I'm going to call the h our height in feet of the tree. Okay, so that's kind of defining what that variable basically is. So now what we want to do is look at what do we want to know. We want to know after how many years. Well, if you remember, years up here was referring to our x's. So we're looking for the x. We want to know how many years is the feet 24 feet tall. Well, 24 is actually our height. So we have a number to plug in. Because initially, you'll notice we have two variables. But we're going to make the h the 24. OK, because remember, it's 24 feet tall, h represents the height, so now I have the equation with one variable, and once I have only one variable, I can now solve. So this is where we have to start thinking of SADMEP. I look on the right-hand side, I can see that variable x, which is what we are trying to isolate. And I have two numbers that are on that side with it. I have the 1.5 that we're multiplying by the x, and I have the plus 15 that we're adding to the 1.5x. Well, in SADMEP, we would look at adding and subtracting for the SA comes before multiplying and dividing, whereas in order of operations, multiplying and dividing comes first. So because of that, that tells me that I'm going to focus first on the adding 15. And when I say focus on adding 15, we are doing the inverse operation, which means we subtract 15. 
but I have to do that one first because in SAD MEP, addition subtraction comes first. So then when I get down to this next line, 24 minus 15 is 9, and I'm left with 1.5x because 15 minus 15 cancels to become a 0. At this point, I now only have one more operation to do. I see 1.5 times x, so to undo times or multiplying, I divide, which means I need to divide both sides by the 1.5, which means I'm left with x equals 9 divided by 1.5 is 6. Okay, So a couple of things here, we undo the addition early on with the subtraction, then we undo the multiplying with the dividing, and we did that in the SADMEP order. And then to answer this question, basically we want to say 6 years to reach 24 feet. It's important that we leave labels, it's important that we box in our answers so that everybody knows exactly what we meant to say. On this next example, we're going to be combining like terms to solve an equation. You'll remember from the past that like terms have the exact, and it's important that we see the exact, same variable endings. So basically what that means is if I have something that is x or 5x, a like term to 5x would be 10x because they both end in x's. If I have y's, 2y's, and 3y's are like terms. However, 5x and 2y's don't have the same variable ending, so they would not be like terms. So like terms have to have the exact same variable endings. You can easily combine like terms when they are on the same side, are on the same side of the equation. So basically what we want to do when we start seeing some of these multi-step equations is we want to first combine things that we can combine. So what I want to do is focus on the left-hand side because I see lots of things on that left-hand side. Before I start trying to move things from one side to the other with our inverse operations, I want to focus on these two terms right here, x's and x's. They are like terms because they both have the same variable endings. So my very first step is to take care of 8x minus 6x. And 8x minus 6x is 2x, and the negative 25 comes down, and the negative 35. Now remember with like terms, I can't take x's and um, subtract a regular number 25. So those are two unlike terms, so I can't do anything further with that. This is where I'm now going to shift into my multi-step in trying to move the um, numbers away from the x. So again, we're trying to isolate x by itself. I see a times 2, and I see a minus 25. Well, in SADMEP, the very first thing I'm going to take care of is the minus 25. And the reason I'm going to do that is because in SADMEP, subtraction is the very first thing with addition. And to undo minus 25, I add 25. I have to bring my work over here. So by adding 25 to both sides, that's going to now leave me with 2x on the left because the negative 25 becomes a 0 with the positive 25. And on the right-hand side, the negative 35 plus 25 gives me a negative 10. So now I'm down to just the one more step to do. I see a times 2 on the left-hand side, so I'm going to divide 2 on both sides. When I divide 2 on both sides, I do x equals negative 5. 
So when I go to do my check on this, this is where sometimes we get a little bit confused between SADMEP and PEMDAS. So to do my check, I'm actually going to now go back into PEMDAS. So we used SADMEP to solve this. But when I go to do my check, I'm going to think about this. On my check, I really should be checking in the original equation to make sure I didn't make any mistakes combining like terms. And I also want to make sure that my PEMDAS is now the order. Because if you'll notice, once I have plugged in all of these numbers, I do 8 times negative 5, not going to have room here, I don't think, minus 6 times negative 5, minus 25, and I'm going to have to have you imagine the other side is just off the screen there is a negative 35. We'll combine what we see here in this expression, and it should equal the other side, and if it should equal negative 35, we'll be good. So again, at this point, I'm using PEMDAS, because I see all numbers, and numbers all together are just going to be put together with our PEMDAS. 8 times negative 5 is negative 40. Negative 6 times negative 5 is positive 30, and a minus 25. Now again, with our order of operations, negative 40 and a 30 is negative 10. Negative 10 minus 25 does give me the negative 35 I'm looking for, so it does check. But the answer is x equals negative 5. This next example is talking about using the distributive property to help solve an equation. You'll remember from the distributive property, you have a number that is multiplying by a group with an addition or subtraction on the inside. Remember that both the number on the front needs to multiply by the inside first number and also the second number separately. So 2 has to be multiplied by the 1, so this becomes 2 times 1, and then you do one more arrow to do 2 times the negative 5x, and when I break up this group, I'm going to get 2 minus 10x. Then the f plus 4 is separate, it's not really connected to the grouping, and the negative 8 is obviously on the other side, so it really has nothing to do with it. But remember that di distributive property, you have to make sure that that 2 goes with both of the things on the inside, so that we end up with um, the correct answer. The 2 is being multiplied by everything in the group. Then I want to look to see what can I combine. Well, when I look and see what I can combine, I've got a couple things going on here. First I'll notice just a regular 2 and a regular 4. And then in between them I see the x. Well, I know that x's can't be added to numbers. They have to be added to other x's and I can't put those together. However, what I can put together is I can add the 2 plus the 4 later on to get a 6. And remember, the negative is going to stay with the term we're talking about, so it's going to be 6 minus 10x. It's important to make sure that you can simplify that. Next, what I want to start doing is we're trying to isolate the x. Right? So this is what we're trying to get by ourselves. So we see first a subtraction and second a multiplication. Now again, remember the, the sign of the term is in front of it. So the 6 is actually a plus 6. So to move it, I need to subtract 6. One of the common mistakes we make on this part of this problem is we end up subtracting, I'm sorry, yeah, subtracting, adding a 6, excuse me, because we see that subtraction down the middle, but really that, neg that negative or subtraction belongs to the negative 10x. So at this next step, the negative comes down with the 10x, and on the other side we get negative 14. Okay, and then we'll get a little more space here. Then when I get to this point, I then say, well, I divide by negative 10 to isolate the x by itself. Divide that out, the negative 10s cancel. And at this point, I'm going to get negative 14 over 10, which I can reduce. The two negatives make positive. 14 over 10 becomes 7 over 5. 
And again, we're happy with 7 fifths. We don't need to make that 1 and 2 fifths. We don't need to make that 1.4. We are nice and happy with 7 fifths. This next example, first of all, has to have us look at the table and figure out what's actually going on. And then we're going to create our own equation and then try to solve it. So what we're doing is we're looking at a table with the number of days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and the number of miles that we are running each day. So if you look at the information now over to the left, we're going to use this table to figure out the number of miles that we need to run on Friday. You will notice here in the table that we don't know what this is. That's the one we don't know about. We haven't gotten to Friday, obviously. It's Thursday. But we need to know how many we have to run on Friday so that the mean of the miles we run per day is 1.5. So how are we going to do that? Well, we know the mean basically stands for our average. So when we talk about the average of something, we talk about the total of the data we're talking about divided by the number of items. Okay. If you look at what we are seeing in this table, we have five days in total. What we want to do now is plug in what we have so far and see where we go from there. So the mean we are looking for is this number right here, 1.5. Okay. Now keep in mind that that's over five days. So then I look at my total. How much have I run? Well, on Monday, we ran two. On Tuesday, we took a break. It must not have been really feeling too good. On Wednesday, we ran 1.5. On Thursday, we took another break. So or maybe we're just taking a rest on each other every other day. And then notice here on Friday, we don't know what we're going to do with that. But we need to include all five days because our average is including five days. So then I got to divide it by the number of items, which in this case is days. So we're not dividing it by four because you see four numbers. We're actually dividing it by five because there are five days involved. Okay. Now what you also hopefully know is that when you see something that's like a fraction, we don't really see parentheses like this, but our numerator is considered a group. And P and PEMDAS stands for grouping. So what we want to do probably first, I think is the best way to do this, is to combine that grouping just to get as far down as we can. We see a lot of numbers with some things that we can probably put together. Well, I can certainly add 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 5 plus 0 and get a little bit further down the line here. So just combining my numerator, I get 3.5 plus x divided by 5. So now I think I'm ready to start trying to move numbers. We are trying to solve for x, which is the number of the Friday that we need to make this equation work. So because we're talking about a numerator being like parentheses, in SADMEP, p is last. So what I have to do now is think about, well, what else do I have on that side? Well, I see divide by 5. So my very first move here is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 5. So when I say divide by 5, and then somebody says now multiply by 5, those two have now canceled each other out, and they've disappeared. On the other side, 5 times 1.5 is now 7.5. And again, now we have just the numerator left over because the denominator has been canceled, meaning it's now a 1. Now I'm down to just one more step. I see 3.5 added to an x, so to undo it, I'm going to subtract it. And I need to remember to subtract it to both sides. When I subtract it, I get x equals 7.5 minus 3.5 is 4. So I believe my answer is going to be 4. So if I'm looking at this number right here, we don't want to leave it as x equals 4. We want to say that we need to run four 
files on Friday. So that would be answering the question with the correct labels and basically telling us the right answer. So these are going to get more complicated as we go and this is just certainly where we are starting. But one of the things you just got to keep in mind is keep thinking PEMDAS when we have all numbers on both sides or SADMEP when we're trying to solve for a variable. We basically are working in PEMDAS backwards and we use our inverse operations to get numbers to move away from the variable we're solving for until we can get down to our final answer.